going to be okay. You're going to make it through this. You're going to be lame for a little while, but you'll be cool in the end. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Who's Joe YouTube Edition? So you've done research. You know where I've started. Crazy. That's awesome. <laughs> Tell me there's not a conspiracy here. Today... I'm so excited to be able to say that I am here with Sean Christopher. Obviously, he's excited to be here, too. Real Joe. Just build. Why don't you go ahead and tell us a little about yourself? I'll tell you a little bit about Sean Christopher. Sean Christopher is the leader of the greatest faction currently in professional wrestling, the Wasted generation comprised of Ravenna Vane, Braden Toon, and Sean Campbell, and myself as the figurehead, the martyr of the lost. And that is everything that you need to know about me and my family. That's everything I could have wanted to know, but was afraid to ask. We do it all for you. So, what is the favorite flavor of Flavor Aid? For the wasted generation. I feel like you're insinuating something here, Joe. I Something I don't very much like. But <laughs> say that the wasted generation did like flavor aid. Maybe we'd go with cherry. Maybe it'd be blue raspberry. Maybe it's the very berry flavor. You never know. I'm an orange guy myself, but it seems like the family doesn't like the orange, so I don't get to buy the orange as much. So... It varies. I guess that's the question. Or the answer. The question to your answer, Joe. Maybe it maybe it's watermelon. Maybe. Maybe it's watermelon. So it's it's been probably a couple of weeks since I've seen you. Have you made any changes to your hair? No changes. Still the same old tacky, greasy mop that I've been here, that I've been having. All good here on this front. I don't know, Sean, because since I saw you at the last event and since we started the stream, I've got to say that I've watched a change in you. Yeah, Joe, you're watching the change in me because you're watching the life drain out of me with every one of the puns that you make, Joe. You're killing me. You're killing me softly. <laughs> you're killing me more than anyone's ever killed me before, even me. And that's saying a lot. One more question before we start the staring contest, which I know you're so excited about. I'm excited. Oh, so good at him. So good at him for sure. Of all the people you've gone up against in a wrestling ring, which of them do you think would be best at a staring contest? The answer to that question is quite easy. It is one baby dragon, Aaron Wade, because that man, when he looks, there's not much behind his eyes. I feel like he could stare at anything for a very considerable amount of time with very little to no problems at all because, I don't know, there's just something very scary about that man, Aaron Wade. He terrifies me. Well, we're going into this staring contest undefeated, 38-0. and 0. I've got this new... Oh, man. Wonderful belt from Undisputed Belts. Well... I'm running a little low on belts right now, so I could always use a new one. You could. You could. I guess we'll have to see what happens. But what we're going to do at this point in the interview is I'm going to ask you the standard question that I've asked all 38 other people is if you could collaborate with anybody on anything, who would it be? And I'm going to go ahead and count down from five. And when you start answering the question... That's when oh. we will start the staring contest. Are you ready? Not entirely, but I feel like that doesn't matter to you. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. If I could collaborate with anyone on anything, it would have to be Jonesy. Because I would love some space cookies or some sweet. I'm already blinking. I'm real bad at this. These contacts make it so hard to not blink. But I want some cool merch and I want some space cookies designed by Jonesy himself. So if I had to collaborate with anyone, that would be the man. Well, I'm still undefeated, 39 and 0. And for those I hate of you, for those of you, <laughs> go ahead. 
I'm just another statistic now, Joe. I'm just a number. Just add it to the list. And for those of you who have watched my videos before, you videos uh, before, know at this point that I'm going to attempt to go the rest of the interview without blinking as well. You are a madman. So, as a wrestler, in your wide experience as a wrestler, what is the worst botch you've had happen in a match? For myself? Oh, well, there have been plenty. But the most infamous botch that I've ever had is probably the time that I scaled the top rope Grab Dump Sanders, old Dumpy Wumpy, Dumpster Bear, and the uh, old school, Undertaker's little old school thing. And I was going to do a flip and land on a chair that was empty. But what happened is in the time that the person in the chair was evacuating the chair, the chair was moved slightly. So instead of hitting the chair when I flipped about 10 feet, I missed the chair completely, clipped it a little bit with my ass, but, but... And just smacked into the concrete. So that's got to be the worst botch I've ever had in my entire life. Uh, It's jumping 10 feet straight on the concrete on complete accident. That sounded like a uh, very pleasant experience. Oh, definitely. It's always great when you're laying on concrete in front of like 250 people and you can't feel any of your limbs. And you still have like a whole five minutes of a wrestling match to continue. Wow. Wow. Oh, kudos to you on being able to continue that match. And one. And, and one. And one. Not to not to be outdone. <laughs> what made you decide to want to get into pro wrestling and how did you end up at Pro South? Oh man, so you've done the research. You know where I've started. So uh I always, I mean, I've just like always wanted to be a wrestler ever since I was a kid. I thought The Undertaker was like the coolest thing ever, and I've always wanted to just be like The Undertaker. And now here I am. I'm like The Undertaker, so that's kind of cool. But, uh, and oddly enough, me and my brother Donnie were super broke, so we would have to, like, all we had was change. So we would go to these, like, vending machines and buy drinks out of them for, like, 35 cents. So we're going on one of our daily, uh, can drink runs and we see a flyer posted on one of the machines for a wrestling event in Piedmont, Alabama. We didn't even know that there was any professional wrestling outside of like the major TV company. So we were like, Whoa, this is weird. We need to go check this out. And then my brother Donnie contacted them about training. He started training. And when I, I was like 15 at the time and one time after training, I just, like, jumped in the ring and, like, did a couple things. And they were like, hey, you should, like, train to wrestle, too. And then I started it. Started it all from the ripe age of 15 years old at the rungy-ass Piedmont, Alabama. Right now, you could basically be pick any wrestling move be plugged into the Matrix Neo style and immediately learn that move. What okay. is what is the move you would want to like immediately be able to perfect? Man, that's crazy. I don't have like anything cool that I do like off the top rope. Like I only do like real boring stuff. So I definitely want to do something crazy, like a six thirty splash or something, like a six thirty. Or like a shooting star press. I always thought those were real cool. I always made those my finishers in the video games. So I guess I would love to learn a shooting star press off the top rope. That would be like the coolest thing that if my body were physically able to do, I would be doing all the time. If you could perform at any wrestling venue in the world, why would it be the Hardy Camp Compound? Oh, honestly, for real though? That definitely probably be the coolest place to wrestle. I was thinking like when you first said it, I was like Madison Square Garden. Like everyone's gonna say that, obviously. But you're on to something here. Being like in Matt Hardy's front yard and just wrestling and doing all bunch of stupid stuff sounds way cooler than wrestling in Madison Square Garden. So why would it be the Hardy compound? You get to hang out with the freaking Hardy boys all day and they do all the dumbest stuff. You get to shoot fireworks at each other. Like you're basically having like half of a wrestling match and the rest of it, you're just doing dumb stuff. So that sounds like the best time of all time is wrestling at the Hardy compound. One of my dream matches 
if I had a million dollars to make anything happen, I would put Wasted Generation up against the Hardys. Ooh. That sounds fantastic. That would be beautiful. So if, if I ever become a millionaire, I'm, I'm going to make that happen. So everyone cross their fingers on Joe becoming a millionaire so I can have a cool wrestling match, please. <laughs> so I, I did some research back on you, and uh, I want you to tell me about Savage Youth. Oh, Savage Youth. Oh, no. What a terrible nickname. <laughs> yeah. So the Savage Youth is uh, basically I was just kind of like I spent the first two to three years of my wrestling career on like a tag team called the Greenhorn Militia. We really, really didn't really like have much identities outside of it. So when I spread off, became my own thing, Savage Youth, for whatever reason, I really don't know where I came up with the name. It was probably just actually I think I saw it on like a, some animated TV show on Hulu. Something classroom, but I can't remember what it is right now. But it's like some crazy animated show, and they were called like the Savage Youth or something like that. So I stole it from that, and there's really no real character behind it. It's just like a dumb nickname that I gave myself so I could go around and like wear Pete Dunn singlets and like do off Pete Dunn's moves and think I was cool. So the Savage Youth days are dark days of Sean Christopher. That's before I found everything, before I found out how wrestling worked. So you've already told us a little about your history as a wrestler, but why don't you go into the meat and potatoes of it and tell me about the formation of the Wasted Generation? Okay. So with the formation of the Wasted Generation, it goes back all the way to 2018 to where it started as a group of like just dumb kids and that's kind of like what the premise of it was it was just hey here's a bunch of dumb kids being dumb and doing dumb stuff and you guys love it because you guys love dumb kids so it's me kevin ryan who's actually later added and then a gentleman by the name of Jax, who no longer wrestles well currently no longer wrestles he's currently retired but he was the original then Jax got hurt, and it was just me and Kevin Ryan running the gambit. For uh, We went all across the great United States as a tag team in Mississippi, Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, Illinois, I think Ohio once. We went to places. We went to places and tagged and stuff, whatever. So that happened. Then the Wasted Generation joined the Akuto Death Society to become the Akuto Death Society. And then I got real tired of Kevin Ryan and Chris Crump because I was always the third member. And that's not cool to just make someone feel like they're lesser than you. So I did what any good human being would do, and I disposed of both of them and formed my very own Wasted Generation with a young Sean Campbell, a young Braden Toon, and a beautiful Ravenna Bane to become the most complete and most perfect form of wasted generation that there has ever been. What do you think is the most underappreciated aspect of the wasted generation? Uh, besides literally all of it, <laughs> like besides literally everything, um, I feel like we're super underappreciated in our creativity in the way that we market ourselves. I feel like people don't appreciate the effort that we put into like our social media and like we edit all these like cool things and these highlight reels and like we make the posters and we make them all cooler and it doesn't seem like it's getting through to anyone who matters it like who like matters in the scope of like new south or pro wrestling in general like Fans love it, and fans are like, yo, this is awesome. You guys should, like, book these guys on all your shows, and you guys should, like, book these guys real well on the shows that are booking them. That just doesn't seem to be getting through to anyone else. So I just feel very underappreciated, especially today. So it was a good time to ask that question because I've been real angry at New South today. So good time. feel very underappreciated, Joe. Well, I was going to say it matters to me, but then you mentioned to anyone that matters, and now I feel like I should cry a little over No, here. Joe, Joe. <laughs> I'm talking about the people that can make the things happen. They don't let you make things happen. They just tell you that you're sponsoring 
my match when like what does that even mean what does that even mean yeah for, for, give me some give joe something to do damn it what do you think is the future of the wasted generation currently i guess the biggest um target we have is to get the new south tag team championships back somehow which it seems like they're now dead set on not letting us do that either as they haven't given sean campbell and Braden tune the rematch that they so rightfully deserve that they have given literally almost anyone else except me let me say the two times that i've lost the tag title never gotten a rematch for them now my boys lose the tag titles and they're not getting a rematch for them but literally everyone else does Tell me there's not a conspiracy here. There's a conspiracy here against Sean Christopher and the Wasted Generation. So first, we're going to figure out, we're going to get to the bottom of that. We're going to figure out where that's coming from. We're going to eliminate that problem. They're going to get the tag titles back, and then I have my pretty little eyes set on the New South Heavyweight Champion. Y'all, to me, are one of the, probably the most unique element out of New South, because Nothing against Talladega Knights. They have great abilities. They're good wrestlers. But their element, their gimmick, I mean, you can see a Talladega Knights in every single other pro wrestling promo promotion pretty much in the United States. It's nothing against them. Yeah, no, no offense. I get it. But there's probably a Talladega Knights or a regional appropriate version of a Talladega Knights in every yeah. promotion in the United States. Y'all have something unique. You have something special. And I would like to see it get pushed more. I appreciate it. And I would like to branch out to other places to, like, let them see our brand and, like, see what you guys got. We get all this positive feedback from everybody about how we're unique and we're cool and, like, we're different. So I would just like to take it on the road, man. Let everyone else experience the wasted generation for themselves. See what everyone thinks. You know, I don't know. Also, I'm Jesus Christ. I'm so impressed with the fact that you have not blinked. I've just been like kind of keeping tabs on that as we go. And I'm like, this man really has kept his eyes open the whole time. I'm so impressed by that. I just need you to know. Yeah, we're about 27 minutes in recording and I still haven't blinked. Crazy. That's awesome. <laughs> So, last question. You time travel back to yourself as a 15-year-old right as you're starting to get into pro wrestling, knowing everything you know now. What do you tell yourself? Oh, that's so tough because I'm going to say so many mean things. <laughs> uh, but we're here now. So, I'm going to say, one, hey, there's this really hot girl and you have a crush on her. Talk to her. Her name's Morgana Moon. She's going to be cool, and you can date her. That's one thing I have to tell myself. Probably not as a 15-year-old, because that's a little weird then. But, you know, I'm just going to let him know, hey, in the future, there's this hot girl, and you're going to think she's hot for a long time. Just talk to her. I'm going to tell him that. Second, I'm going to tell him to stop taking dumb advice like I did for so long. For like, I feel like I wasted the first like three maybe even like four years of my wrestling career because I just took a lot of bad advice and was doing a lot of the wrong things. So three is to travel and do like, I mean, I have since like traveled. I've well, not even say well traveled, but I've traveled my fair share of the great United States of America. But for the first two years of my career, I was told that you were not allowed to travel outside of the great city of Piedmont, Alabama. If I were to tell myself then, I would say, hey, screw whoever told you that because that's going to make you suck at wrestling and you don't want to suck at wrestling. You need to travel and wrestle. That and I would just tell myself, you know what? going to be okay. You're going to make it through this. You're going to be lame for a little while, but you'll be cool in the end and you'll start getting wrestling and everything will be so much better. So that's what I would tell a little 15-year-old Sean. And stop taking so many stupid bumps, Sean. That's on these terrible rings, like the worst rings possible, hard as concrete. And I'm here landed on my neck like four times a match. I'm taking like top rope suplexes. I took a tombstone off the top of a steel cage onto a freaking ring that felt like a slab of concrete. I would definitely tell myself to never do that for the amount of money that I was paid for it. Well, I have now gone 
almost 32 minutes without blinking. And I guess Absolutely. I'm going to we're going to hit the point where I'm going to get you to say I was not able to beat Joe in a staring contest. I was not able to beat Joe in a staring contest today, but there will be another and I will probably lose that one too, but there will be another. Well, I'm now 39 and 0 undefeated a streak that even the undertaker would be envious of. But what I do at this point in the video is I get my guest to call out somebody else to come on, be a guest and be on the other side as a staring contest combatant. Who would you like to call out to come on and be a guest? That's actually, yeah, fantastic. So I want my youngest boy. Well, is he our youngest? Okay. My <laughs> middle child. <laughs> Wait, no, he's just the <laughs> oldest one then. My oldest child. The f- light in my eyes. The glimmer. The glimmer in my eyes. The fruit of my loins. One Sean Campbell to come on Who's Joe? And I want him to stare at you in the face for as long as he possibly can. Because he is one other individual that terrifies me. So if it can't be Aaron Wade, because he's probably off doing like a serial murder or something, like whatever he does during the week, Sean Campbell on this podcast, I think he would give you a good run for your money, Joe. He doesn't have to wear contacts. Like I meant like these are definitely my real eyes. He definitely doesn't have to wear these in his eyes. So he'll be good. He can do it. Come on, Sean Campbell. I'd love to have you as a guest to come on and do a steering contest with me. I'll definitely make sure that there are no tables involved. (laughs) Rip. (laughs) Rip. Well, that's going to be it for another episode of Who's Joe YouTube Edition. If you haven't already liked the video, go and do that. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, go and do that. If you've never been to a New South event to see the excellence that is Sean Christopher and the Wasted Generation. I will put links to all of their socials and all of his socials in the video description. There will be one video that I've recommended down here at the bottom left, one video that YouTube has recommended down here at the bottom right. Watch one of them. Watch both of them. Watch all of them. And we will see you the next time.